Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Abby Aslan, if you are new here, and if you are a regular returner, how's it going? Um, today, I'm really excited. I'm going to be doing a sit-down video. I haven't done one in a little over a month since like my favorites video last month, which I really need to film another one of, but today's video is a little bit different. Um, I am a senior at the University of Alabama, if you did not know, and I'm double majoring in finance and accounting, graduating in May, have an internship. Um, this summer with a big four firm in Houston, so that's cool, but I have gone through almost a full four years of college and I've learned a lot along the way. It's been quite the process, quite the time, and today I really wanted to do a 15 things uh, people don't tell you about college type of video. Some of them are going to be like very like lighthearted and normal, but also like still very helpful, and then others are going to be like pretty deep, but I think that there's a lot of things that... I didn't really expect or know what were going to happen or things were going to play out the way they did with certain things in college, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. I make lifestyle videos, college videos, health and fitness stuff, a little bit of fashion, a little bit of beauty, a little bit of everything, honestly. I dabble in all the areas, but definitely subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and let's just go ahead and get started with the 15 things people do not tell you about college. So number one, first and foremost, this one is so straightforward, but you have no idea how many times I've seen this like negatively affect people. Always check the weather before you go to class. If you live somewhere like in the south, um, the storms and everything can really just like come out of nowhere and it will not be on the forecast to rain and then it like all of a sudden rains or it is on the forecast and you just literally completely forget to check it and then you get caught in a torrential downpour and you have to walk all the way back to your dorm or walk to where you're parked and you don't have an umbrella or a rain jacket and you have a freaking $1,200 laptop in your backpack and you know you have your phone and all these clothes that you don't want to get wet or white shoes you don't want to ruin. I literally remember one of my roommates freshman year, um, she like one day she just like didn't have an umbrella or something and there was like a heavy heavy downpour here in Alabama and she was walking back to the dorm from her class but her phone literally like she had to get a new phone because her um, phone got so wet inside of her rain jacket so even rain jackets sometimes like cannot help you in these like crazy storms and so just always check the weather before you go to class I know it sounds stupid but you have no idea how many times like you're just gonna completely forget to like blank and check the weather before you leave for the day and then you're gonna get out of the class and the weather's gonna be completely different and you're gonna be like oh crap or two so for the love of all things good please do not fall into the trap of having to sign or re-sign a lease around october of the school year for the next school year that starts in august literally all apartment complexes and like rental companies like are so hard on college students and they take advantage of young college students especially who don't really know this process yet and they are going to like flood your email inbox they're going to like pretty much harass you to sign or re-sign your lease especially if you're in like a very heavy college town um where all the apartments cater to the college students um and then they're going to try and lock you in at their highest rate possible uh whenever you do re-sign and they may offer like some re-signing bonuses or signing bonuses like oh, here's like a $50 Amazon gift card. I remember I got like an Echo Dot or something my sophomore year for re-signing. Um, but trust me, you don't need to sign your lease in October or September or November. They will pressure you so hard to do that. And they're going to say things like to secure your room, to secure your spot, to make sure you get, you know, this floor plan, all these things to make you feel like you need to sign right then and there when you're literally not even going to be living there for another like 10 months and it's ridiculous. So trust me, you will be fine. I definitely recommend signing for somewhere before like you go home for summer just so you aren't like super stressed when you get back to school. So if you find somewhere before like April or May when you go home, I think you'll be completely fine. Just please do not fall for the trap of like having to sign in October because they're going to say all kinds of like convincing things to make you want to re-sign or sign your lease in October and they're gonna make it sound like they have like no units left and everything and that you know space is really short when in reality a lot of apartments are like like literally have trouble filling spaces and also the incentives they give you to sign and re-sign may sound good but they give even better ones in the spring and summer I know that like my I remember my apartment that I lived in my sophomore and junior year during this past summer and then like in March and April, their like signing bonuses was one free month of rent, waived furniture, waived utilities, and or not utilities, but waived like cable and Wi-Fi or something, we still have to pay electric, waived reserved parking, and you got a $500 like gift card when you signed. And I was like, 
this is so much better than the Echo Dot I got. Like, what the heck? Number three is that renting a house may seem cheaper when you just look at the overall price of, you know, like a bedroom in a house as opposed to an apartment. But doing your research and knowing the extra um, costs that are added on to renting a house will definitely help you out a lot in the long run. I know, like, for me, I've always just assumed and thought that renting a house, um, especially in a college town, would be a lot cheaper. And a lot of times it is because, you know, you have more bedrooms, there's more space generally, and, you know, you get to have a yard and better parking, blah, blah, blah. And um, it does end up being cheaper by bedroom, but I have found that, like, at least in Tuscaloosa, they try to make houses, like, each bedroom, depending on the location, anywhere. Like, if it's a three-bedroom or two-bedroom, they want to make each bedroom be paying at least like 600 to 700 800 dollars depending on the location and overall what you're paying for the price of that house um you could be having a mortgage on a very nice house so it's kind of crazy to think about um but honestly i'm living in a house this year as you guys know and a lot of you guys know i've not had the best experience at all um just with you know unresponsive landlords i've had rat problems like the whole nine yards and it's just not been enjoyable at all and my rent is more expensive here than it ever was in my apartment, but it's because I'm splitting a three bedroom two ways instead of a three bedroom three ways, so it is a little bit more expensive. But you guys, you have to think about um, how in apartments a lot of times they're going to bundle your utilities. So basically, you know, like your cable and Wi Fi is going to be bundled, and they'll have some kind of deal with uh, cable and Wi Fi where you know, it's either going to be included or you're just paying like a very low price to have both cable, cable and Wi Fi. When you're in a house, you have to pay for the cable if you want it, which we do not have cable. We just pay for YouTube TV, which is $50 a month. We have our Wi-Fi, which is $90 a month. And if you want good Wi-Fi that doesn't make you feel like you're on Internet Explorer in 2005, you would definitely have to pay, I would say, at least like $75 for Wi-Fi. And I have to pay a little bit more just because I need the high speed for uploading videos and editing and stuff, of course. And then you have to pay for your water sewage trash electricity which if you're in an old house like i am or it's just got an old ac unit or something it's so expensive in the hot months because a lot of like the cool air is just like leaking out of the house in random places you have literally like all of these extra costs and they really really add up and a lot of times even though you still have those costs at apartments they're bundled and they're a lot cheaper than what you're paying in a house just remember those extra costs and just make sure that if you are touring a house and you're looking at one especially if it's older to really really check it out and like not just like tour and look at like the aesthetics of it but to like actually look at like the foundation of it and make sure there's not no any like giant holes underneath the house or like um make sure you know there's not like any just weird things going on because it's really important to check those things ahead of time to know what you're getting yourself into trust me i learned that the hard way and in my experience i honestly just think living in an apartment is easier i feel like whenever you're in, an, in a house and like if you have to like stay alone um for example for like a few days i feel safer in an apartment than i do like staying in this house by myself number four is to always bring chargers with you and i just say this because you never know when you may be stuck on campus all day and you need your computer or your phone and it's going to end up dying and you really need it for whatever reason and it's no fun having to go into a class where you use your computer or if you even have like an online test i know some of my classes we've had online tests that we take on our own computers inside of the classroom during our class time and i can't imagine if like i had one of those classes at the end of the day and my computer was like dead and i didn't have anything to take it on that would be so bad so just always pack your chargers with you get in a routine of putting them in your backpack every single morning before you go to class number five is getting to know your professors it will really pay off in the long run i know when you're a freshman um actually i kind of went backwards my freshman and sophomore year i was like I always sat front row, I always like answered all the questions in class, like I was that kid. And um, I got to know all my professors, at least the ones that seemed like open to meeting their students. And, and I think that showing up to class and like getting them to know your face and your name will really pay off because you are going to need letters of recommendations for internships, for jobs, for grad school. And so if you really try and like get to know them, it can really pay off. And like, for example, my um, intro to micro or just microeconomics class that I had fall of my freshman year. I had that professor fall of my freshman year and fall of my sophomore year and during fall of my sophomore year he came up to me and pretty much just like offered me a job in the department as a TA which was huge and that's like a huge huge thing on my resume and it's provided me with so much experience um, with like tutoring and helping and just responsibility. I've met people through it. I've gotten to know a lot of professors through it 
and it's just a really great resume builder as well and if I wouldn't have gone to his classes and participated in class and if he didn't know that I was a good student and um, if I just would have kind of like been an average student he wouldn't have came up to me and said that and now I have like a part-time job on campus too making money so it's like it pays off number six how you start will affect how you finish so I know C's do get degrees and everything but if you just kind of coast by your freshman year and sophomore year in your lower division classes and do the bare minimum and just you know get the low B's and like the high C's or regular C's whatever it is you are setting yourself up to have such a rocky foundation to kind of go into your upper division classes on if you do not start out strong and try in those classes and try to get the A's and B's you will really regret it because for me I made like all A's and A pluses in all of my lower division classes because I just worked really hard in them so then when I got into my accounting and finance major my accounting classes I have only made one A in all of my accounting major classes and the rest of them were like a few I think I had like two B pluses like two B's and then like a B minus and a C so that like overall like was bringing my GPA down but like it didn't bring it down a lot at all and I'll still graduate with like right out of three nine. So it's like having that strong foundation from my freshman and sophomore year helped me so much and gave me that wiggle room with my GPA. So just know that like actually trying and working for good grades in the beginning will seriously pay off and it'll make your life so much easier in the long run. Number seven, you may not like college and that is okay. It's not for everyone and a lot of people, I've like seen a lot of people on YouTube say they haven't had the best experience in college and I would say I've had a great experience overall, but I will say that I had a really long and rough start. Like it took me a while to like really feel like I was where I needed to be and I, to where I felt like I belonged and to where I like met friends and everything, as opposed to a lot of people who are around me who are like making these big friend groups and making a lot of friends right out the gate and um, just kind of knew what they were doing and getting all these extracurriculars and all these things on their resume while I struggled with it a lot. And it took me like a year and a half to like actually start feeling comfortable but you are the only one in charge of your college experience. You know, you control its destiny. If you just kind of like, re if you're a recluse and you just like seclude yourself because you're scared to put yourself out there, that's how your college experience is gonna go. You know, you're not going to meet any other people. You're not gonna get involved in anything. And I know that if you have a rough experience starting out, it's really tempting to kind of fall back into that position to where you don't wanna put yourself out there. But I promise you that going outside of your comfort zone and um, doing something and making a change after you've had a rough time will pay off more than just sitting back and being sad about it. So take that from me and um, just know that it's okay if you don't like it and it does not look like the movies and you know there's a lot of times where it's really fun and great but there's also a lot of times where it can be boring or really hard and you're crying so just know it goes all over the place and if someone is portray portraying their experience as one like the movies and stuff, I feel like they're the pe type of people who really want everyone to believe that's what their life is like, if that makes sense. Number eight is to start the internship and application process for internships early. The earlier you start, the better. Um, nothing, like there's no worse feeling than like waiting and feeling like it's too late to get involved in any of that, which it really never is too late technically, but I feel like the earlier you start doing it, the more interview experience you get, which is a huge, huge plus. So I think when you start that process early for internships or even for organizations or anything like that, if you just throw yourself into it and just know that like what's meant to happen will happen, it will be such an advantage for you because you'll get all that um, interview experience and that's just really helpful in and of itself and also if you get an internship early on like during the summer for example like I have one the summer after my sophomore year um, which a lot of people don't really start accounting internships until um, the spring semester of their junior year or of their senior year excuse me I got one done the summer after my um, sophomore year of college in accounting but it was in private so it was a little bit of a different timeline and everything but I feel like having that on my resume like really helped me and having that experience really helped me and it also gave me the flexibility to just do YouTube last summer and take a break before I go into the real world and like actually have to work all the time for the next four years of my life. And um, even if you do start the internship process early, you know, it may free up one, uh, one summer for you later on to do another internship to get more experience in something else if you aren't really sure what you want to do because you learn what you want to do by doing all of these different internships and everything and doing different jobs. I feel like that's the best way to figure out what you want to do is to really immerse yourself in that job. 
So whether you, you know, free up a summer for more internships, more jobs, starting abroad even, or just giving yourself a break, it could really pay off. And it's, once again, another great thing to put on your resume if you start it early. Number nine is you're going to feel like you don't know what you're doing or like you're just going to feel lost 99% of the time. And then the 1% of the time where you don't feel like you're lost and you know what you're doing, that's when, you know, life throws a curveball at you and you're back to not knowing what you're doing and feeling like you're lost. Like each semester, I have felt a different sense of not knowing what I'm doing. Like one semester, I'm like, I don't know what I'm majoring in. The next semester, it's like, I don't know what I want to do an internship in. The next semester, it's I don't know who I want an internship with. And then the next semester, it's like, I don't know, once again, if this is a major I want to be in. And then you're thinking about, um, I don't know what job I want to do. I don't know where I want to live. So number 10 is that you probably don't need the full meal plan in your freshman year of college. A lot of schools will require you to have a meal plan um, your freshman year. And I honestly think Alabama requires the full meal plan freshman year, but I think you can appeal it and like get like a half meal plan or a certain number of swipes or something. But I promise you, I did not even use close to like a full meal plan. Like, um, it is convenient, but I do, I will promise you that like you're not gonna eat, be eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner there every single day. Number 11 is do not drink a drink that you did not make and do not let your drink go out of your hands or your sight unless it, you're putting it with like a trustworthy friend. Um, you know, you just can never be too safe or careful in college and it's just really important to make sure that you are the one making your drinks because you never know what someone could slide into it before um, whenever they're, they're making it. Obviously, if you're like at a bar and you order a drink for the bartender, you can drink that, but like make sure you never set it down like when you go to the bathroom or if you just need to go grab something or say hey to someone, don't set it down, just take it with you wherever you go. Pretend that it's glued to your hand and you can't put it down. Number 12, do not buy your books before classes start and do not buy them from your campus bookstore. Do not like buy the textbook before your classes start because you never know if you're going to switch professors, who's gonna require a different textbook, if you're gonna end up not taking that class that semester, whatever it is, don't buy it before classes start. I know as a freshman, you're like almost excited in a sense to be getting them and you feel a lot of pressure to get them right away but like you don't need to get them right away and do not get them from your campus bookstore unless it's literally not available anywhere else, which it probably will be. Um, just because you can get them on Amazon, you can rent through Amazon and it's really cheap and easy. You can buy through Amazon and it's really cheap. And, well, it's not cheap, but it's a lot cheaper and easy. Um, you can use Chegg. I know like Barnes and Nobles, I think does like a program with textbooks. Number 13 is making true friends takes time and that is okay and to not trust like the, well, I don't want to say not trust, but like just know that like the first group of people you meet or the first people you meet may not be your lifelong friends or your college friends throughout college and that is okay. So me personally, I didn't really meet anyone like that I stayed really good friends with until the very end of my freshman year and I didn't really start getting close to them until with them until my sophomore year. So personally, since I wasn't in a sorority and I didn't rush, you know, it was a lot harder for me to make friends and I had to like really put myself out there. Um, and just say yes to things that normally would make me uncomfortable like saying yes to Instagram DMs asking me to go get coffee with someone um, That kind of thing. I just really think that you have to get uncomfortable in order to get comfortable with friends And I know that like a lot of my friends who were in sororities They just became besties with like the first people that came their way the first people they met and they it ended up just being like very forced and then like by the end of the freshman year there would be like a huge falling out and it just like wouldn't end well so just know that it's okay and that like your people will eventually come and you just have to be patient when making friends in college because you know not everyone is made to be your friend and that's okay number 14 you will probably change your major at least once and that's totally fine um i changed my major a couple times i think i came in as psychology but like before school even started i switched to business um and i switched to i want to say just finance and then i switched to MIS and then I switched back to finance and then I switched just to accounting and then I was accounting and finance So I did all of that switching though when I was in lower division So it didn't affect any of my classes because it was all within the same school It was in the college of business. So it was fine But if I would have like made all those changes while I was in upper division That would have been a problem because then I would be taking classes I didn't need to take and all that kind of stuff and there are a few that I did end up taking that I like aren't counting now towards anything I'm doing and that's fine. And I think if you don't know what you want to do, um, taking classes that are related to something you're interested in can really, really help you figure out if that's something that you want to do or not. And a lot of times, like if you're like me and you just um, kind of like got a lot of credits done, like in high school or whatever, and 
you just kind of have to take classes to be full time. Like last semester, I took law and econ just because it was with a professor I had already had twice and I knew I loved his class and I heard great things about the class. So I was like, I might as well take it. And I ended up loving the class and it like low key made me want to apply to law school and like go to law school and everything. And I was like, this can't be happening. I'm literally a senior. I can't be like sitting here like wanting to go to law school. Like what's going on? If you have the space in your schedule, take it. Or at least just talk to the professor, like get in contact with the professor and talk to them about what they teach, what they do. You know, I think talking to your professors and about what they did before they became a professor, if there is anything that they did before they became a professor, which there probably is, that can be so beneficial because it helps you learn about tons of different career paths and like different careers in general. Number 15, the freedom you have in college is a double edged sword so choose wisely which end of the story you're gonna be kind of like falling on just because you know college you have so much free time and you're truly like so free and I think a lot of kids come into college after you know being like living under their parents roof and everything and they just go crazy because they're not used to all this freedom and they just have absolutely no boundaries for themselves and it ends up leading them down a rough path so just you know be responsible be careful and you know have a good time of course and just remember to like keep a good head on your shoulders, you know, go to your classes and, you know, do your homework, do well on your tests if you can, you know, like study, but just make sure that um, you're using your free time wisely, I guess I should say. Get involved in clubs, extracurriculars, um, you know, you don't have to like find a side hustle. I like really hate using that word, but college is a great time to like kind of like find like something you're passionate about and really dive into it because you have all that free time. And if you can develop that before you go into the working world and have something that isn't your job that you like to spend time on, like some kind of hobby, that can be really beneficial for you in the future if you already have that figured out and established going into the real world. So those are the 15 things that people don't tell you about when going into college. I'm sure you've heard some of them before, but I just wanted to try and give you guys 15 that like I thought were really pressing for my time in college. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you guys in my next video. Be sure to subscribe if you aren't already and follow me on social media. It's all linked down below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.